when you think about it, that's the way culture has been for 100 years. Like when I went, when I went to high school, we had a creative writing class. And the creative writing class required us to read two authors and then to write a paper that excerpted and, and quoted and remixed these authors in a way that said something critical and interesting about the two of them. Now, when I wrote that paper on Hemingway and Fitzgerald, if I would have called the Hemingway estate and said, you know, may I quote the following passages from, um, from this work by Hemingway, they would have thought I was a nut. You know, what are you talking about? Can you quote? Of course you can quote. Right? That freedom is built into our expectation of what it means to be able to write. But when you switch to the film channel, when you talk about taking the works of um, one filmmaker and doing a video that remixes the work of the other filmmaker, Hollywood believes you need to call them up and ask for permission to engage in that remix. Like, that requires permission. And, and my point is, we should adopt the norms, the intuitions, the tradition that governs writing when we think about that activity too, so that schools can begin to teach kids how to do remix videos and make them available on their school website so people can be proud of the creativity that they're producing. So I think that there are ways for us to practically think about restructuring the architecture of copyright law. It used to be triggered on, you know, originally triggered on publication. Well, that made sense, you know. Most people didn't publish works in, in 1850. So if you're publishing a work in 1850, you're likely to be the sort of person who is properly taxed by the copyright system. And everybody else who used culture didn't trigger the copyright system. And then in the early, the Americans in the early 1900s, we began to incorporate something called copies, which originally didn't refer to what we mean as copies. It referred to uh, you know, the actual production of publishing something. But okay, the word begins to slide. More things get in, within this realm of quote copies. But today we live in a world where everything is a copy. You can't do anything on a digital platform without producing, technically producing a copy. And rather than the copyright regime react to that by saying, oh, wait, wait, that's not what we meant. What happened initially after the internet came along is that copyright extremists went around and started reinforcing the idea that what copyright law means is that every single copy, even the transmission copies between server and server, you know, and nodes on the internet, is technically subject to the regulation of copyright. Well, you know, that was exactly the wrong reaction. It's a, you know, it's just a, 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 a homonym to say that these are what we're talking about as copies of what they were talking about back then. So it's the, the, the only point is that just you have to think about another <coughs> way to regulate. What is the trigger? Um, you know, maybe it's commercial exploitation that should be the trigger. You have commercial exploitation, zing, copyright law now attaches to your work. We gotta worry about who gets paid for that. And so what that would mean is, when you know, those kids made that remix video of the Listomania song, they were not engaging in a copyright activity at all. But when they upload it to YouTube and YouTube starts running um, ads next to it, okay, there's a, there's a copyright activity. YouTube's commercially exploited that work. So I have no problem with saying to YouTube, you need to be paying, but to the kids, there's no copyright event that was created by your work right now at all. But in American law, American law right now, it's exactly the opposite. It's the kids who have violated copyright law. And when YouTube puts it up on the website, there's no violation of copyright law, so long as they comply with the takedown request by Listomania to take it down. So Listomania has got to sit there and police YouTube all the time to know what's up there and what's not. And, um, and the kids are told that you're pirates for pirating Listomania songs. That's just exactly backwards. And so we could think about how to redo it in a way that made it so trivial for 90% of us and leave the complexity to the 10% that need to worry about the way in which they're commercialized.